Thanks for coming to check out another Valiverse video. If you've seen it, uh, we did an office tour of Valiverse headquarters, and there's a section of my office where kind of call it the time capsule, a lot of childhood toys and toys from the 80s, 90s era. And today we have a special video where I'm joined by my good buddy Sal of Two Cents Toys, and we are going to go through all of this stuff and kind of just talk about everything, our memories of it, nostalgia factor, and, um, you know, hopefully it'll be a good time to see what's back here and, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, jump in the time machine. Alright, so I guess we can start with the top shelf. Uh, you know, these are the IKEA DTOF cases that all of us collectors have. And I've got them chock full with stuff that I had as a kid growing up. Uh, only a few things are my childhood things, but I wanted to go back and get a lot of the stuff that I had as a kid and sort of make these cases uh, as like a time capsule so I can come into the office and see all this awesome stuff that, you know, built on my love of toys growing up. So, you know, there's kind of a little bit of, uh, you know, um, you know, a setup here as far as what each shelf represents and things like that, but a lot of it is kind of just jumbled together and stuff like that. So, you know, we'll uh, we'll start with the top shelf and Sal and I will talk about things we remember about having these and, you know, maybe things that we wanted or things we didn't have and, um, you know, just uh, enjoy just reminiscing. So, over here, uh, Hall of Justice and the Batmobile from the Superpowers line. Uh, to me, I would say the Superpowers line was the best action figure line of the 80s. And, you know, we'll get to the rest of the Superpowers collection and go more in-depth in that. But when uh, when I started collecting the Superpowers stuff the last couple of years, uh, you know, I wanted it all, except for, you know, some of the cheesy vehicles. But the Hall of Justice is so iconic. Had to have it. I had the Batmobile as a kid growing up, and I was able to find this kind of mint Batmobile and still has the the clicking, but, um, you know, did you have superpowers growing up? I had exactly one. Exact which one? I had the Joker. <laughs> it's a good one to have. It's a great figure. But I feel like your collection's incomplete without the Justice Jogger. <sighs> That's, you know, if you're going to have a, a, a superpowers collection, you got to have the Justice Jogger. Um, How else is Superman going to get around? Listen, it's bad enough I have the Lexor 7, but, you know, Justice Jogger, I guess, you know. Now, now I'm going to be on eBay all day looking for a Justice Jogger. That's right. Up here for the Super Brothers collection, they did, uh, I forget what this came with. It was either a mail away or something like that, but they had this poster. And on the back of the poster, it's like a cross sell of all the items. But, you know, I definitely wanted to, to get that poster. Um, these right here, um, you know, in, in 93, 94, when Superman died and Batman got his back broken, they came out with these audiobook uh, cassettes, basically, of, you know, the... Batman Nightfall and the Death of Superman and I remember my dad got those for me and it's like yeah I read the comics but I had like a Walkman and I would listen to those like religiously so I had to go back and and get those um hey, I actually kids, you want to hear your heroes die you know it's <laughs> it's actually really good they're really entertaining you can actually find them on YouTube for free but I wanted the you know the old cassettes but the interesting thing is the guy that voices Superman also voices Batman and like vice versa so there's like all crossover, like everyone's the same for, for both of them. But, uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the beginning of like, you know, the the birth of the, the DC animated, you know, uh, lines and movies and things like that. Like this, this is where it kind of started. Like it's, you know, it's got sound effects and things like that, but I, I would, I would recommend giving them a listen. Hell yeah. Um, <clears throat> Batman was really big for me growing up. So like he was my favorite superhero. He still is today. It's like, I had like everything Batman. I had this puzzle that I went back and found. Um, there was a, a store, I forgot what it was what it was called, but it was almost like a Hallmark five and dime kind of store. And they sold a lot of things by this company called Applause. And you see there. Um, they they just make like like weird stuff, like all licensed stuff, mugs, uh, PVC figures, night lights, things like that. So my parents would take me to that store and like I would get everything Batman. So like I had this mug and kept my pencils in, you know, that po that that puzzle. As we get further down the shelves, there's going to be more uh, applause stuff. But as you can see, more superpower stuff, more Batman stuff. 89 Batman, 
super important uh, in my childhood. This is the NECA one. This is, you know, a, a modern day thing, but it fits with the kind of the theme of what's going on here. Up there, the, the, the Dark Knight collection from Kenner, which was an amazing line of figures. I had this thing, and funny story, I, my parents took me and my brothers to Florida for Christmas in like 1989, and they wrapped this up and like we went for Christmas. So I opened this up while we were in Florida, and on our way back in the airport coming back, we got stopped by security because they thought this was a gun. And like we were sitting in security for like, 45 minutes like waiting for them to come back with this thing and it's like uh, it's a plastic gun so you know kind of funny how in 1989 security was so tight on a on a batman disc launcher gun you know uh that superman pvc is another applause thing i had that superman when i was a kid um this guy i did not have uh the commando figure obviously commando i eat green berets for breakfast from when i was on iconic i talked about how uh, Commando is one of my favorite Arnold movies along with Conan the Destroyer I said it but the these line uh, uh, I believe it's Diamond Diamond did a, a line of Commando figures and they did this giant 16 inch figure and then they did like an 8 inch figure and then they did like small 3 and 3 quarter inch figures but this guy is at soft goods he's got the vest and everything and I desperately wanted that figure as a kid and I never had it so I kind of went back and got it now let off some steam Bennett. Holds up, man. That figure's awesome. Heck yeah. You notice you have some Motu up here. That's a <laughs> hee hee man, right? Hee <laughs> hee man. Listen, I had that Michael Jackson. There's a picture of me holding that Michael Jackson that I got for Christmas. I am still to this day a big Michael Jackson fan. Um, you know, I know he's a, a polarizing, you know, figure and you know, went through some some stuff, very dis divisive, but to me, I judged the guy on his music, and I had that figure. That line of LJN figures they did was really cool, all the different outfits. It was definitely the, the best era of Michael Jackson then, um, so I had to have that in the collection. Speaking and, of Monsters with Kids. Right? <laughs> it's kind of funny that they're next to each other. I didn't plan it that way. Um, this is the Max FX uh, Freddy Krueger. So Tony from Analog Toys, he showed this in his uh, collection, his room tour. I had this as a kid, and I remember growing up, there was this giant chain of comic book stores called Comics Plus. They were huge, like enormous, like not, not target size comic book store, but they were big, and they had toys and comics everywhere. And I remember I was really big in Freddy, into Freddy Krueger, which is weird, like growing up. I got nightmares constantly, but I loved Freddy Krueger, and they had this thing there, and, you know, they talked about how it was a, you know, a canceled line, and if you don't know the history of it, there's a lot of cool YouTube videos about how this line came about and then why it got canceled, but my dad got me this Freddy Krueger for my birthday one year, and, you know, it comes with the figure, and you dress him up, so it's it's definitely very cool to have, and they're fairly inexpensive now. I think I, I paid, like, 40 or 50 bucks for that, and, you know, it's in, it's in the box, still still sealed, so... Because I had that and I played it all the time, again, another thing I had to have. Then, like, followed by another weird thing I had as a kid, this Fisher-Price Zoo. Um, I don't know, remember where I got it, but when I was, like, five or six, I had it. It didn't have, like, a lot of the pieces, but most of it. But this doubled as my Batcave, you know, because I didn't have the Batcave yet. This was before Toy Biz did that really awesome 89 Batman Batcave. So this was literally my bat cave, but you know, I found it. I found it with all its pieces in the original box. So another weird thing I had to have. And they're pretty much indestructible. They are, they are. You like, you pick up that box, that thing's got some weight to it. You know, all blow molded, uh, you know, PVC stuff like that. That was robust stuff back then. They really knew how to make toys. That was also before costing and you know, all that shit went up, but. Uh, these are shackles for monster, monster in my, um, uh, my pet monster. Uh, I didn't have one as a kid. My friend had one, but I would play it all the time. And I was looking to get one. However, if you look on the secondary market, they're like 300 bucks. And also, like, his nails had, like, uh, gold, uh, I don't want to say fabric, but it had, like, a, it, like a, a, a sheen that covered the material that f now flakes off. So finding one with all that intact is really hard. 
But I have the shackles just to kind of, as a, as a, you know, throw back to it. Maybe one day I'll actually get one, but it's on, it's on the list. Uh, I had Amigo Spider-Man growing up, so that's why he's up there. Um, I the weird thing is, is when I was a kid, I felt like the Amigo figures were like 12 inches. Did you have any Amigo figures growing up? Uh, yeah. Remnants of a once great civilization. I had pieces of Amigo figures. Okay. Like I said, that was the only one I had. But to me, I remember it being like a 12-inch figure, obviously, because I'm small. But mm -hmm. then when I got it now, I'm like, oh, that's small. And when we get to, like, one of the wrestling shelf, I'll talk about something where I thought was much bigger, uh, you know, beforehand. Uh, this was big for me. This is the 1994 version of Creepy Crawlers. This is the exact version I had. My parents got me yeah. for Christmas. And, man, did I burn myself constantly mm -hmm. on this thing. For those of you who are not familiar with Creepy Crawlers, you squeeze this goo into these metal uh, plates, and then you put it in the oven, a light bulb heats it up, and it solidifies and they come out like rubber. However, they give you plastic tongs to take out a burning metal plate that you then put into a tray of water, and it's supposed to cool down. Well, because I was impatient, I would want to get the plate out and put it in the water to make it sizzle. Really, you're supposed to leave the plate in for like 20 minutes. But who has that kind of patience as a kid? Right. So obviously, you know, molten steel, you know, you're going to burn yourself. And man, did I burn myself constantly. Which explains your obsession with uh, ordering fajitas in the restaurant today. <laughs> no, I'm same. I remember the Christmas that my older brother got this. Burnt the sh stuff out of my hand. Like, the they were the flimsiest tongs. Yep. As soon as they hit that hot plate, yep. they just start... Basically, not melting, but the plastic gets really soft. And, yep. Yeah. Now, the crazy thing is when I bought this, uh, you know, a few months back, all the goo is still liquid. So I was going to, you know, have my son come here one day and, like, we were actually going to do it and see if it actually all still works. So we'll see if a 1994 version of Creepy Crawlers actually works still. It'd be a learning experience. Right. Uh, the last thing we'll talk about briefly on this shelf is the Kraken from the Mattel Clash of the Titans line. If you saw in the uh, office tour video, which I'll put a link in the description if you haven't seen that video, I have a you know one, uh, a one sheet original movie poster for Clash of the Titans because it's one of my favorite movies. But this line is super rare and not only is the whole line rare, but the Kraken itself is very, very rare. And he was the last piece I needed for my Clash of the Titans collection. You can see he's massive. You know, all his, his, you know, he's got all his working arms, and he's got, a, a, you know, a big tail that you put on the back of it. And I had went to, a, I went to a comic book show, geez, three years ago, and there was a guy selling this. And at the time, he was selling it for three hundred bucks. And I was like, nah, you know, I, I wasn't getting the Clash of Titan stuff yet. So I was like, I'll pass on it. The next year, I go, and he's selling it for four hundred bucks. And then COVID happened; they didn't do the show. I was just at the show this year, and I went specifically to see if this dealer still had this thing that he was toting around. And of course he did. And then he wanted 500 bucks. I'm like, dude, I could have got it two or three years ago for 300 bucks. And I molded over, molded over, molded over. And they're really hard to get on eBay. And also, it's very fragile. It's probably one of the most fragile toys ever made. So if you buy one and then shipping it, shipping is probably the most stressful thing ever because everything breaks on him. So I was like, here's my chance to actually get one. I could bring it home, one piece. So I ended up leaving the show, but then having second thoughts, stopping at the bank, getting money, going back to the show, and getting the Kraken. And I'm glad I did, because he's a very cool piece uh, to have in the collection. So that's it for the kind of the top shelf. All right, so we're moving on, and now we're going to the, the first level of the actual Detoff cases, where, you know, all the good stuff is. So... Starting off is where the Superpowers collection is. Now, I had Batman, Robin, and the Joker growing up. Sal, you had the Joker. The Joker. <laughs> For one whole summer before he uh, broke his legs off. Oh. Yeah. But then you probably ended up, you know, replacing him with, with this piece of crap. Eventually, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is my Superpowers collection. Uh, when I started getting back into Superpowers a couple years ago... I knew I wanted a very, like, like, perfect collection. Now, it's not complete because it doesn't have a lot of the vehicles, but I have every figure and all the, you know, the, 
the international ones as you'll see as we move on but I wanted like mint figures I wanted all their original accessories which if you know are very hard to get so like Wonder Woman's original lasso green arrows arrows and and quiver and and uh, string on his bow which ends up being the, the Ken and Robin Hood one which we'll get to but I wanted a gorgeous superpowers collection because the colors are vibrant the sculpts are great the characters are great I'm a huge DC fan so to me this line is like it for me you know as, as, a, as a kid growing up this is awesome the Clark Kent figure is fantastic um, the villains are great so to me I can't say enough about uh, superpowers Michael French from Retro Blasting does a very good like in-depth history of superpowers so go check out uh, his channel and his videos uh, he does a really good job you know talking about all the items and the history of it so over here if you don't know superpowers got more rare as the series went on so series one was kinda easier to get two harder three the hardest and this is more of the the harder expensive figures so tire was the last figure I needed I just got him about a week ago you know freeze with his helmets super super hard to get golden pharaoh it was weird that like these kinda these third tier characters were just so rare and hard to get and then you have the rarest of them all which was the uh, cyborg which was only sold in I believe Canada and Brazil and this is the most mint figure I've ever seen of him uh, I paid probably way over for him but I needed him he doesn't come up very often he's got his accessories he is absolutely mint which is why he's in a secondary case um, and then the two international figures I have are the Riddler and the Black Suit Batman, which the Riddler is just Green Lantern repainted, and he was from Estrella, but he's super rare. Um, cool figure, though. I love the Riddler. He's one of my favorite Batman villains. And then I've said before, 89 Batman, huge on my childhood. So when they offered the Superpowers Batman, which is a great sculpt, in the 89 colors from Brazil, I was like, I have to have that. But very hard to find. If you're serious about superpowers collection, I would recommend you know getting them because the prices are just going up like crazy. So moving right along, we have the Clash of the Titans uh, collection here. So I didn't have these figures growing up. I actually didn't know about them until after you know my childhood, but it was important to go back and get these. Now they're very very hard to get. The accessories break easy. The tail on Calibus uh, is notorious for breaking. The Pegasus wings are brittle. Just like I said, the Kraken is, is brittle. These figures are brittle. Um, figures themselves are great. They're, you know, they're they're durable. They don't have peg holes in their feet, which is funny because you can't put them on stands. So it was before like action figures started having those those details. But great line. They didn't, you know, I, it would have been great if they went deeper. You know, the, the toys didn't do well for Mattel, but Still very cool to have. Um, I'm not huge on customs, but there was a guy that made custom stuff like the robe for uh, Perseus and the owl and a, and a sword and the helmet. So I got two versions. I have like the actual real version and then, you know, the custom version over here. Um, why am I blanking on his name? Uh, Karen. Karen. Didn't come with the, you know, with, with the his staff, but, you know, this person made that stuff. Same thing with Calibus and, and the whip. So those are customs, but... Calibus has his original tail, so cool line. Um, I wish someone would update this line, like they did the you know the the newer movie in the 2000s, which kind of sucked. But it would be great if someone redid these figures in like six inch scale. Like that would be pretty awesome. Uh, back there we have the Rocky from the Rocky Three line. They did uh, when Rocky Three came out, they did a series of figures that was. Rocky, Apollo, Clubber Lang, and Thunderlips. Great, great line of figures. It, was, it wasn't it was Remco, but everyone was kind of following this Remco style of He-Man body in a way. So every figure is basically the same body, just repainted different. But they had soft goods, they had the boxing gloves, the belt. Um, I, at one point, I had the whole line, and then I sold it, and then I you know had seller's remorse, so I went back and got at least Rocky on card, uh, just because, you know, it's such a cool line. I didn't have it growing up, but have to have it today. And then the only thing I have from the Indiana Jones Kenner line is the Mail-Away Belloc. Uh, this is the sealed one that came with the original mailer box. I'm a sucker for mail especially if they have the original mailer box, so I knew I wanted some representation from the Kenner Indiana Jones line, so, you know, as 
crappy as a figure as it is, you know, Michael does a great uh, Indiana Jones video. Go and watch that. He just did recently where he talks about the figures and, you know, switches them around to make really, really good versions. But, you know, at the end of the day, Belloc is a, is a crap figure, but it's cool. He's got soft goods and, you know, made for a decent mail away. And now the last shelf for the top row here is the Kenner Robin Hood collection. This, to me, was very, very important in my childhood. Um, was this big for you, Kenner Robin Hood, or was this before? Because you're a little younger than me. I had some, but I didn't know what they were. Okay. Um, I had this one specifically. I had a Gamorrean guard back there. <laughs> and I want to say it was maybe that one. I'd have to see them without the, the cloth goods. Okay. But I didn't know what they were. They were just some random toys I found at a yard sale. Gotcha. And I've told this story before. I saw the movie but didn't know what was happening and didn't understand what, Morgan's Fre what Morgan Freeman's character was. And I was terrified that I was going to wake up with some Arabic man with an Alibaba sword cutting me open. <laughs> um, give you a quick look at, at the line. So this is, to me, a very underrated line. Like, the movie is fantastic. It still holds up to this day. It was one of my favorite lines growing up. Like, I had Sherwood Forest and, you know, all the figures. The interesting thing about it is all the figures are kind of repurposed from old Kenner lines. So as Sal said, Friar Tuck is the Gamorrean guard. Uh, the Sheriff of Nottingham is a Robocop figure. Will Scarlet is Robin from the Superpowers line. Same thing with like Robin Hood and Azeem. They're the, the Green Arrow figures. So you could see the G on the belt of Robin is the same G that's on the belt for uh, Green Arrow from the Kenner Superpowers collection. Very underrated line. There was a series two that uh, never came out, which would have had great figures. You know, they have so really, really nice soft goods. You know, the, the the pull string on the on the bow is really nice. Great line. Unfortunately, it did not do well, which is a travesty. Uh, more Kenner stuff back there. The Kenner Predator Aliens line was big for me as a kid growing up, and I remember that version of Predator was like the version of Predator to get. Yep. I love that line. Right? It's so good. We're going to talk more about that as we get lower because Sal brought me a nice little gift not too long ago. Uh, and then last for up here is the Willow line. Another kind of underrated line that didn't get its due justice. Yeah. It's a fantastic movie. Yeah. Um, uh, they're one to one scale. <laughs> um, I, I, this is another line where I wish someone would redo because General Kale is one of my favorite like movie villains. He just looked really cool and he is the inspiration for basically the Bone Collector and the Action Force line because if you're going into battle, you might as well wear a, a, a skull on your face because it just looks very intimidating. Back there, the Mail Away Willow. Again, sucker for Mail Aways. But Tonka made this line. They don't articulate. They have metal stands. I had a bunch of them. They're cool, but maybe with the new uh, Willow coming out on, on Disney, they might do a new line of figures, I hope. And if they do, they need to revisit the old stuff. Okay, now we are getting to some very impactful stuff in my childhood. Um, Sal's a little younger than me, but was, was the 89 Batman movie like, how old were you when the 89 Batman movie came out? Uh, what month did it come out? Uh, what was that? A, I think it was a summer movie. That I was, I was like two months old. Oh, crap. Okay, so yeah. guys, it wasn't as impactful for, for Sal. But like, when would you say you saw the 89 Batman? So it was because I was the perfect age for the animated series to come out. And now perfect. my older brother is actually Ryan's age. Okay. So he was, you know, alive and well when this came out. So we had it on VHS and all that and watched it all the time. I had several of the uh, the Keaton Batman figures. My favorite one was the uh, rubber overlay that you put on. <laughs> that was on Bruce Wayne. Yeah. It looked like he had like space boots on. Yep. What a terrible figure, yeah, but so was, awesome at the same that time. That was my favorite one because it was Bruce Wayne and Batman. Yep. So innovative at the time. Like, yeah. Who was doing that? Like Mego was doing that. I shouldn't say who was doing it. Mego right. did it. So it was like, but Mego did it at a larger scale. Yeah. So it kind of worked. But and like, yeah, you get to the this four inch scale was unheard of for that you know, to happen. One of the, uh, I use the term loosely, but one of the neighbor kids had the uh, the Batcave, like the manor and all that oh, stuff. Oh, okay. So, okay. Pl well, 
remnants anyway. I don't know if it was complete or not, but so I, I love 89 Batman. Okay. Well, that's good because now we're talking about 89 Batman, which to me is the most impactful property toy line of my childhood. I was prime age. I was six or seven or I was seven when 89 Batman came out. And man, I could remember going to see it when we saw it, where we went for dinner, that, that kind of thing. To me, it was, it was perfect. It was the perfect movie. And then, of course, Toy Biz came out with their line, and I had to have that Batman, which was interesting because that Toy Biz line used a lot of repurposed superpower stuff, mm -hmm. but Batman was the only movie-based one. Like, yeah, Joker kind of, but Joker was more in vain with the superpowers Joker than he was it with the movie Joker. But, uh, you know, 89 Batman was huge for me. Back here we have... The Batman cereal from Ralston Purina, mm -hmm. there's actually still cereal sealed in the bag in that box. Now, it was crazy that they vacuum sealed a bank to the front of mm -hmm. this box of cereal, and we're going to get into something else that did that. Yep. But I remember this cereal, and a, a fond memory I have is I was eating this cereal, and of course, as a kid, you're taking huge bites, and you're not breathing, mm -hmm. or you know, you're trying to breathe while you're, you know, you're eating cereal, and... I started choking. My stepmom had to give me the Heimlich, so I'll, I'll always remember the Batman cereal for that, but also for that awesome bank. That's right. My favorite part of the bank is not only that it not that it exists. I mean, I do love that. Is that the eyes and the face are just stickers? They are stickers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you run the risk of the glue giving up, and it'll just be eyes, or it'll just be a floating mouth, or. You but. can get that bank fairly cheap on eBay. For yeah. any of you out there, I'd recommend just getting the bank. Yeah. Strangely, um, the bank is the cheaper of those two pairings. Right? <laughs> Dude, they, the G.I. Joe Action Star cereal, I have one of the original boxes, but now those boxes go for like 200 bucks. Yeah. It's nuts how, how crazy people are with like cereal boxes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Turtles one, which we'll talk about later, I tried getting the Turtles one. The Turtles one is absurd to try to get uh, these are more of the I talked about applause these are more applause figures for the Batman Returns line that I had as a kid this another applause figure this weird kinda plush Batman with a plastic head I loved it I had this applause Batman nightlight this is my actual original childhood Ertl Batmobile so that's one of the things that survived my childhood. Sal gifted me this last week. This is one of the Burger King or McDonald's Batman Returns McDonald's. toys. McDonald's. And that is from my childhood. Which is awesome. Yep. So I love stuff like that. Yep. I, so I appreciate that. Uh, Batman cards. You know, the, these were big for me. My dad would always take me to the store and get packs of cards. And, you know, I've said it before on an episode of the Infinity Equation. I chewed a piece of 30-year-old Batman gum one, one show, which was really gross so I wouldn't recommend doing it so moving right along we have more Batman stuff now we're getting to the Batman Returns section so again I said up before that Kenner line when Kenner took over from Toy Biz they were making amazing Batman figures they went back and they did uh, like the Keaton-esque Batman from 89 Batman but also were doing these Batman Returns Batman figures but the quality of figures was so much better and Yes, they were doing outrageous costumes like Deep Dive Batman and Laser Armor Batman. But there was something about them that was very cool. And this Polar Blast Batman with his like gray and white camo was super cool. I remember playing with that figure all the time. The Robin was great because that was when Tim Drake took over as Robin in the comics. So to have that, that Robin with the two-tone cape, awesome. Um... Toy Biz Flash I had as a kid. That was when the Flash show. Do you remember the Flash show that came on? Like it was like pre WB stuff. Mm -hmm. But they did so they did a Flash TV show, and I remember I was big into the Flash. And you know when that show came out, I, I watched that thing religiously. Uh, Kenner did a Swamp Thing line, which super super underrated line. Yeah, um, I had them growing up. Right? Weren't they awesome? Yeah, I still have a couple from my childhood. Completely, completely underrated. So underrated. The sculpts were great on them. Kenner did great stuff back then. Yeah. Um, speaking of great, more great Kenner stuff, this yeah. is right up your alley. Yes, sir. The Batman animated series line. Combat Belt Batman. Oh, 
he's so rare to get, which is nuts, because I had him as a kid. Yep. Now, going back today, you're like, See, how's that figure so hard to get? That's that, that's a crazy thing. So, I still have my childhood one, and the emblem is mostly okay. It keeps long gone. I don't ever remember my parents mailing away for anything. I'm told I've done zero research, but I'm told he was a mail away. Combat Belt Batman? That's what I'm told. No, he was... There is a version okay. of Combat Belt Batman that was a mail away where they took the fi this figure, the Combat Belt figure, and put this gear mm -hmm. in yellow on him. Okay. And that was the mail away I version. Gotcha. I was like, I don't remember them yeah. doing that, but yeah, I had every single Batman, and well, all these ones anyway. And I just had an epiphany that I never put two and two together on. The laser Batman back there was one of my favorite ones with the silver. And I'm just now realizing that might be why I like the armor Spider-Man so much. Yeah. That's probably it. Yeah. Because like, I like the armored Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, that, like, that, wa I used to call him, like, the waffle suit Batman. Mm -hmm. Because that's it was what it looks like. It was also textual Batman when they did him in gold, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, I had, would have been, the plural would be Batman, I Batman. guess. Batman. I had plenty, I had several, several Batman. And I remember... The Robin I had was not that one. The one I had was the came with a giant yellow plastic paraglider. Uh -huh. How I got him, and to this day I do not understand. I woke up, and I had this habit of looking out my window every day when I woke up, because that's what three and four year olds do, I guess. I don't know. And I saw something yellow in the backyard. I went out there, and it was that Robin. I asked my brother if it was his. He said no. And I was like, all right, well, I guess someone just randomly left a robin in our backyard overnight, and that's how Score. I got my robin. So. Good find. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that first wave of animated figures, I had the Two-Face. Mm -hmm. Two-Face had, like, a real gold chain around his neck. Mm -hmm. The Riddler was a great figure. The, the, I mean, everything was great about that. The show, the figures, it was a great time for, like, Batman fans. So, you know, for you it was awesome because you kind of, came in with that line right whereas i was like continuing to the next genre or you know evolution of it from the 89 right. version so yeah. i i was primed for that also so it's yeah. kind of cool that our generations like mm -hmm. overlap with batman the animated and series that's why like anytime i read like a dc comic or anything i hear kevin conroy in my head <laughs> when i read dialogue from, from batman that's the voice i hear not, not, not Keaton, not Bale. It's always Kevin Conroy. See now, now I'm gonna as when I read Batman comics. Now you you're gonna do that to me, and I'm gonna think that, which is pretty awesome. So thanks for that. It's it's a nice problem to have. <laughs> um, here are some things from my childhood that I still have. So these are my original ones. These are some Ertl diecast figures. They did a whole range of of DC figures, but I've I got Superman and Batman. This is you know another applause PVC figure, of Batman and Joker that were mine. This is a Corgi. 60s Batmobile. Now this is kind of from my childhood, but it was passed down from someone else who had it in their childhood. This came out in the 60s when the show was out, and he worked with my mom, and he would babysit me every now and then, and he gave me this Batmobile, which was his as a kid. He also gave me my Mego Spider-Man, which is, you know, why I had to go back and get that Spider-Man. But this actually survived, which is crazy because they're you know they're kind of kind of rare to have, um, but also very cool. And then rounding it out, we have um, I think it was when Hasbro took over for Batman, but this is the the Nightfall Batman, which huge for me uh, growing up because I love that version of Batman in the comics. And then back there is a Superman watch that my dad got for me years ago, and the telephone booth doubles as a bank, so that's really special to me because I've had it forever. I used to wear that watch. I get made fun of in school, but, you know, I'll still watch wear that watch to this day. So, thanks, Dad. Speaking of watches, do you happen to remember when Jurassic Park The Lost World came out? I don't, because i never even seen it. Okay. Burger King had a tie-in where they would sell watches, and there were four of them. Oh. Now, yours truly thought, what's cooler than one Jurassic Park watch? <laughs> Did you wear all four at the same time? wear all four of them at the same time on the same arm. <laughs> so... So now I was everyone, pretty pimping in second grade. So if you don't have those watches anymore, I'm going to have to go and find them for you so that you'll have to wear those watches every time I see you now. Okay, now we passed the kind of the superhero section. Now we are on to the Star Wars section, which 
unfortunately only has a small space. Uh, I should devote more to Star Wars because it was so important to me as a kid, but, you know, it's got a shelf. So maybe down the line I'll, I'll give it some more. But for us, you know, I'm sure Star Wars was big for you. You know, Star Wars is big for kind of, like, every kid had Star Wars figures. But here's some vintage stuff. Obi-Wan, Bespin Luke. Bespin Luke was my all-time favorite figure, along with Michael French. Mm -hmm. This is my childhood R2-D2, which didn't have the label, so I painted that. Now, that was probably seven-year-old Bobby's uh, paint job, so not terrible. Seven-year-old Bobby's but paint job not... is better than 32-year-old Sal paint job. <laughs> Stop it. No, people. He did a custom He-Man for me. That's fantastic, so don't listen to him. Uh, this is a bootleg uh, Mexico Bespin Luke that I had to pay $10 for because... It's my favorite. In Bespin case. Luke. <laughs> Bespin Luke is awesome. Um, so the, now going out to the Kenner line, you know, 95, this, this resurgence of Star Wars came out, and they, they did these superhero-esque looking Star Wars figures. But to me, I was all in. I bought every single one right from the start, and, you know... Dagobah Luke with the long saber because they did long sabers and then fixed the error. The mail away spirit Obi Wan from Frito Lay. The mail away uh, stormtrooper Han from Fruit Loops. Yeah. Mail away Mace Windu. Uh, dude, if it was Star Wars, I was all over it. Uh, Bespin Luke, again, he's my favorite. I remember this figure was really really hard to find because it was coveted and it was in one of the the later like it took them a while to get this figure out and also he, his hands were movable so it was like you can recreate the you know the the cloud city fight scene i remember paying like 20 bucks for this figure at wow. like a toy show now back then 20 bucks was a lot you know especially because these figures were five six bucks mm -hmm. but i had to have bestman luke yep. now the boba fett why this is awesome is Sal gave this to me not that long ago. Last week, I think you were yep. here. Yep. Now, he had this in, in his collection, but you had gotten it from... I got it from a reseller who had a store, and he bought you know this entire collection off some guy, and this was on the other side of the country. Like, we're on the East Coast. This was about 28 hours towards the West. Now, the reason that's significant is because, if you could see, there's a... Benny's 599 sticker on this Boba Fett. Benny's is like a five and dime, big lots, job lot kind of store that sold everything. However, Benny's was only in Rhode Island, right? Or they're, yeah, they're, they're only managed? there's. I think there's used to be one store in maybe Connecticut. Okay. I know there was one over the border, but otherwise it was only in Rhode Island. Well, yeah, Benny's. So Benny's is a a family owned shop that just closed down in what 2018 or 2019. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a staple of Rhode Island. So the fact that he got this figure from across the United States with a Benny sticker and is now back in Rhode Island is very significant. Yeah. So um, stuff like that is very cool to me, and I appreciate that Sal gave that to me. So it definitely has a spot in the collection. Yeah, and this, uh, this particular Star Wars line, The Power of the Force, those were my first Star Wars. Okay. So, like, I had two Kenner figures didn't know what they were like I didn't even know they were Star Wars um, I got them from a guy up the street I can tell that story at another time cause it's it was probably like Lobot <laughs> they're not you're not far off it was Greedo and Klaatu okay um, he had a bucket of them they, they were his kids and I'd go up there and keep him company while I worked on his lawnmower or whatever kids were growing out of the house so I was like oh neighbor kids gonna come hang out and he'd just be like oh you can have one of these and all that so but otherwise, like, those were my first foray into Star Wars, so I didn't know any better. Um, love the Darth Vader, all that, but uh, my, my boy Bosk, you know. Bosk was a good one in that line. No one no one can tell me that the Kenner Bosk is superior to the Power of the Force Bosk. Not at all. Like. Not at all. Because they didn't make him all super buff. He, yep. only, he only got better. Yep. So, as much as I love Kenner Bosk. You know, Power of the Force Boss always has a special place. Uh, I agree with you. That was a great figure. Um, and then kind of the last thing in this, this Star Wars shelf is the Mike, the Galoob Micro Machines line. And I remember when this line came out, first it came out with the Death Star and Hoth and Endor. Man, that was it for me. I could remember getting these sets and just playing with them for hours, recreating the, the scenes out. It's funny because the added is this big, and the, the you know the characters are that big, but it's all right, man, because we had an ion cannon, 
we had you know this lift up it's the it's the echo base you could put a snow speeder in there jabba's palace dude these were awesome now these got kind of interesting because they mm -hmm. they were characters like heads and stuff yep. that turned like in mighty max to them. like yeah. mighty max yeah. still this like this jabba palace is an amazing playset. Yeah. So, do do you remember when they would do sets of like it was I think it was like only figures, but they were they were like a like they look like books. Yep. Yeah. I, yep. I had a ton of those, and they were all like I think they did like Shadows of the Empire. And they stuff, did. So it was people I didn't recognize because I had only seen the movies. So I'd have like Prince Shizor and oh yeah, like, I don't know who these people are. But it was cool. Yeah. See the 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 Micro Machines line went really deep. Now I didn't like when they changed to like, um, they 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 called it something else afterwards. Where then they made the figures that had the swivel at the waist so they could sit in vehicles, but they were slightly bigger. I remember that. Yeah. I forget what they were called, but that I I didn't get into that because it wasn't the same line to me. They broke real easy. The, yeah. This this Galoob Star Wars Micro Machines line. Man, I have them all in the in the you know on my shelves in the in the warehouse section of the office, but I wanted some representation in here, and these are two of my favorite sets. But the the Darth Vader head that turns into Bespin is awesome. The C three PO Cantina, like there a lot of great design elements went into making those Micro Machine sets, and I feel like that's what's lost now as far as like designing cool toys like. The, the play value of those. I told you, I played with those for hours, man. Hours. Mm -hmm. Just recreating scenes. So, you know, I think toys today just are missing that that play aspect. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see something like that come back. Mm -hmm. And now, the last uh, shelf in this row is kind of an odd, like, mix match of stuff. Um, you know, I tried to keep them themed, but this one is the, the outlier. But I'm okay with it because it's so weird of the stuff that's in here. So, we'll start in the back. That is the Matchbox Diecast Voltron. Um, I did not have that as a kid. A friend of mine had that because I think he was a little, little more well-off and rich. But I remember playing with it, and it's really heavy, and it's got vac metal metalization on it which, as you can see on mine, is kind of deteriorated and turned gold and is no longer silver. But I had to have that just because I wanted it as a kid. So, you know, it's also massive. It's cool. Voltron was great. So, you know, the lions come off and could be single lions. But as a whole, I think that that's, you know, one of the best vintage Voltron figures that was out there. You know, granted, companies have come out with versions that are like amazing now but to me this one was it so i feel like i need to show them off a little bit just because you know if you've never seen one in person i recommend checking one out because they're very of engineering for the time it came out it is it is you know and for it to be matchbox and not like your typical action figure company is interesting um here we have an obscure line, for those of you who don't know, this is Sectars. Did you have any I experience did. with Sectars? I actually, I do. Um, I had two Sectars toys as a kid. One of them I didn't know was a Sectar toy. Uh, one, the, the figure I had, I don't know his name, I think he's a colonel or a captain or something. He's green torso with purple arms. I know him, yeah. Yeah, he was the one I had as a kid. I thought he was the, no pun intended, bee's knees. I thought he was a cool <laughs> figure. The other thing I had was the hollow fly, parafly, parafly, I think. It's the, the green or the orange bug. It was supposed to clip onto uh, another figure's back with the hollow, the shiny rainbow wings. Mm -hmm. Wings were long gone by the time I got it, and I was small enough that I could fit it around my wrist. And so I wore it around my wrist and shot lasers out of it. Like it was a it was a role play toy. I didn't know the two were connected. See, for those of you who don't know this line, this is done by Coleco in the '80s. If you could see, there's a glove uh, under there that you could put on your hand and activate those wings that are very fragile that go on the sides of this thing. And you could basically use this flying bug slash figure as a role play item. Very innovative 
Uh, unfortunately, it didn't really catch on, and the line kind of died out, but they did an amazing play set. Yeah. Uh, the line's really hard to get nowadays, because, like I said, those wings are fragile, mm -hmm. you know, some of the soft goods and fur doesn't hold up. They did a tarantula in the line, which is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, this is one of those lines, I know someone did a Kickstarter where they release the figures in like four inch yep. but they didn't do like the bugs no. i'd really like to see someone come back with an iteration of this with the bugs um maybe for the swarm in action force i'll do a vehicle that you wear on your hand and that's like you know legs like something like oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey man you never know um but i just think like if you haven't seen the new dune remake they have like these flying dragonfly like helicopter vehicles and when i saw those i'm like Man, that's almost like an evolution of, uh, you know, sectars. So mm -hmm. I think there's something there. So we'll explore. Uh, next to him, we have Michael Knight from the Knight Rider line. Uh, I wish I had Kit, but that's the figure that came with, with the car. And another obscure one right here is, uh, I believe his name was Nuke from the uh, Captain Planet line. I didn't have any of the other Captain Planet figures, but I thought this figure was cool. He glows in the dark. So I had him and he fought, you know, Batman and stuff like that as like, you know, another another villain. Um, but a cool figure and fairly inexpensive. As Michael would say, toys for your other toys. Exactly. Yeah. Now, not inexpensive, down here are Battle Beasts. Battle Beasts were done by Hasbro back in the day. There was little PVC figures. They had these holograms on their chest that revealed water, fire or wood and that was like the faction they were in it was a super cool line however good luck trying to get them now they're yeah. for some reason super expensive so i wouldn't yeah. recommend trying to like get into that line and collect them now you'll be spending yeah. a pretty penny and that's only in the last couple of years because i remember looking into the line when i first heard about it like 2013 2014 and it was like oh i can get like 20 of them for 40 bucks or whatever and I think it's the weapons. It is. It, it is. It's the weapons and the holograms yeah. that fall off. So, yeah. you know, a couple of them I have that don't have the holograms, but a few do. Yeah. And then uh, finishing this obscure case is some wrestling figures. Oh, dog toys. Dog toys, exactly. So first, this is uh, Sting from the Galoob WCW line. Now, I wasn't a WCW fan, but I get I would get wrestling magazines as a kid, so I knew who Sting was. So I was big on this, this Galoob line. They, they came with belts, and they were just cool figures. But the cream of the crop is the LJN WWF mm -hmm. line. Man, these figures were awesome. Yeah. Um, everyone's were beat up as a kid, so trying to find versions that aren't beat up are really hard because the paint yeah. on the rubber figures just doesn't hold up. Especially if you find a yellow shirt Hulk with the right? Hulkamania on it. Right. Uh, the, yeah, the white shirt Hulk. Yeah, yeah. White shirt, yeah. Well, that's like, I'm a huge Ultimate Warrior fan. The Ultimate mm -hmm. Warrior was on the black cards, just the hardest one to get. That figure's like 500 bucks loose. I'm yeah. like, forget that. Yeah. Um, but uh, Iron Sheik and Hulk Hogan were iconic to me as kids, and um, I had to have them as representation in the case. Uh, good versions, they, they look pretty nice, Hogan's got his belt. But again, like I was talking about with Amigo figures, I felt like these were enormous when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and they weighed a ton. When I got when I bought these a few years back, I was like, oh, they're kind of small, and they don't really weigh a lot. Yeah. So it's, it's funny how you have these memories as a kid that then change like as you get to an adult. So we are getting into some really, really good, obscure stuff. And since now this is more Sal's territory, I'm going to kind of let him take over a bit from here on out. All right. Which, weirdly enough, the more obscure we get, the more I know about stuff, which doesn't make sense, but we're going to roll with it. So uh, outside of Mask, I pretty much had at least something from in this, in this case, something from the line or what have you. Um, I guess we'll start at the front and work our way backwards. Rock Lords. Well, I didn't have that one. I had, I believe his name is Boulder. He's literally just a boulder. Mm -hmm. uh, I Weird line, man. Underappreciated. Underappreciated, yes. Because they fold up, and where do they become? Diorama pieces. Oh, that's a good point. You know what I mean? Like, that's a good point. So, I, I had to use my imagination a lot as a kid because usually I'd have the toy and no frame of reference for it. So Rock Lords for me was very much that. It was like a rock that became a bad guy. And, you know, G.I. Joe was used a lot. 
So bad guys versus good guys. Be like, oh, whatever mad scientist I had was doing experiments on rocks and fusing people together because I don't know that made sense. So like Beast Wars. Oh, they're robots disguised as the animals. Okay, you see where this is going. Um, but. I don't know what your experience with Rock Lords is, Bobby. But... I had one as a kid, and that was the one that I had as a kid. Yeah. Um, he just kind of was probably like a garage sale find that I just threw in with the rest of my toys. But the, the original Mattel Masters of the Universe line had the two Rock yeah. guys. Yeah. Rock on and... I don't remember the other guy. I don't remember either. But to me, this was like an extension of that. Mm -hmm. So he just kind of got thrown into the mix. Yeah. And that's, I, I think, where people don't really give them credit is their articulation. For being a transforming mm -hmm. figure, you can still move them like a person almost. Yeah. It's not a perfect range of motion, but from, like, the G1 Transformers I've handled, they, I guess, roll circles around them. But um, then we move on to uh, something Bobby and I share in common is Exo Squad. I love Exo Squad. Um, now, I had, that's the A-frame, right, with the wings? Yep. Yeah, I had the A-frame as a kid, um, no pilot, or didn't know they were related, I should say. And for those that don't know, if you, uh, have a little bit of gumption, you can fit a three and three-quarter G.I. Joe in those. Which I never tried as a kid, and when you told me that, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, that's what I, I shoved a G.I. Joe in there all the time. Now, I love... The Exo Squad line. I had never seen the show, or I, I'd seen chunks of it, but not enough to have a sequential story and mm -hmm. understand what was going on. A lot of it went over my head as a kid. Um, it's free to watch on Peacock, I believe, for those interested. Holds up. Fantastic show. It's a great show. Very deep story. Yeah. They, they tackle some really heavy shit mm -hmm. in that show, especially for a kid's show. Like, really heavy. And all of it went over my head. But... I'm, I'm watching it now, and I'm like, wow, this is really freaking good. But if you're looking to start collecting this line, don't. Don't. They're so expensive. There's so many pieces that are missing, and they have a cable that comes out of the cockpit and connects into the back of their head, doing like a neuro link, cerebral link, whatever, way before Avatar ever did it, mm -hmm. and they break. Even All harder the is the, the power cell. So if yep. you could see right behind his right shoulder that little clear piece back there is a power cell that every uh e-frame had mm -hmm. but just lost like who puts yeah. a, a piece that small it's almost like the mic on heavy metal yeah basically and they're they're translucent if i'm not mistaken yeah so yeah. it's if you for those that played fallout or have played fallout think of it like the the reactor core that you have to use for power armor it's the same concept but they're so small they're th they're so thin it's like yeah. Yeah, you may as well just cut a piece of credit card out and shove them in there if it really makes <laughs> that big a difference. Uh, Monster in My Pocket, which Bobby has some pristine examples. Again, one of those lines I didn't know anything about. I had some. Uh, again, from my older brother, he had, like, a, I think if you remember the the little game Barrel of Monkeys, uh, for those that don't know, it's, a, it's just a game that kids play, but it was a large plastic barrel, and he had a barrel full of those things. And they were like the perfect size to fight my guts guys, my green army men. Guts. Wow. So that's what I use those for. And for anyone that knows me, monsters are kind of my thing. I love monsters. It was a it, it was a good line. I remember my, my friend kind of got me into it. Like you know, he introduced me to it, and I was all about it. And you know, we we would buy them at KB and then collect them and trade them and stuff. Um, the se it got weird, like the second series came out and then they started adding paint. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like it lost what it was when it started out. Um, yeah. It's fine, just as these little PVC figures. Um, you know, if you want to get really deep with it, like, it's a line you can definitely collect. Like, it's, it's, you can get it fairly inexpensive, but every figure was done in certain colors. And some colors are more rare than others. So if you if you're a completist and you want to get into like crazy with it, it you know that's going to cost you some money. But like I think like this seal box was I don't know 15 bucks. You know I think I I have, I have the whole set of all the I think there's 45 figures in the first series. Probably cost me 40 bucks. 
you know, it's it's good to have, but we were, you know, mm -hmm. Sal and I were just talking about, they did a, a blow molded mountain that you could fit all the figures in as like a display thing and put it on your wall. For some reason, man, that thing's like three to five hundred dollars and it's just a blow molded piece of plastic. But I guess it wasn't big and no one really bought it. I don't remember seeing it as a kid. I would love to have one to display, but mm -hmm. they're just a bit pricey. Yep. And moving on past that, I will go with the shadow, oh. which uh, I to this day have never seen the movie. We need to do a watch party of that. Yeah. Oh, this movie still holds up. I remember the trailers on TV as a kid and seeing the figures. The one I had was the, the clear one. Uh-huh. When he's invisible. I had, like, two of those for some reason. And as a kid, I didn't know that he was called the Shadow. I thought he was, like, Batman, basically. <laughs> um, and they kept saying the Shadow knows in the trailer. So I thought his name... Like was shadow nose, oh, like geez. like a nose, like N O S E. <laughs> so I, uh, uh, shadow nose is what I kept calling him, and I was like three, four, maybe five, and I was like, that's a dumb name. And so I'd mentioned on a live stream previous some time ago about good costumes saving kind of a bad story or a bad story killing a costume kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Shadow Nose killed the shadow for me. Because I thought his name might have been Shadow Nose. So. We need to remedy this. Yeah. Because to me, the shadow is one of my favorite movies and favorite characters. So I was all about this line. It was kind of like, this was my next version of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Line came out. Movie was great. Figure line didn't do too well. But I was all about this figure line. Yeah. And it, you could see there's a you know sticker for a, a mail-away hologram ring. I never mailed away for that as a, as a kid, and I'll say it for the hundredth time. I was big on mailaways. I actually tracked down a sealed version of the hologram shadow ring right here. So that's a new addition to the the, the case. I know Michael French has one. We've talked about it before. Yes, sir. And uh, one of my favorite things in the case, which no one seems to appreciate but me, Captain Power. Mm -hmm. um, I had the... Uh, don't remember the name of it. It's the the bad guys uh, ship, the black jet. Yeah, that you pointed at the TV. It was big. Yeah. It was big and bulky and square. So I had that and Captain Power the figure. Didn't know the two were related. I got That's them. funny because those are the two I had. Yeah, I got them. It was a, I, I don't know if you'd call it a yard sale or not. I went to some school in the summertime that wasn't my school, but they had like just the hallway was lined with people selling stuff. Yeah, they would do that like. I didn't go to church as a kid, but like they would do yeah, that do kind of church, stuff at yeah. like churches and things. Yeah, we had one. It was every year. It's called Whale of a Sail, and it was at like the community rec center or whatever. But I got the jet and the figure, and I played with that jet so much. I didn't have a tape, didn't have batteries, but it had an injector button, and that was a game changer. <laughs> <laughs> and it had a handle on the back, so I didn't have to like hold it weird. I could just like hold it, and it looked like a jet flying. Uh huh. And Oh, man. So I had two fighter jets um, made by, I think they were called American Plastic at that point, but they used to be called Gay Toys. And uh, they had a front seat, back seat, and just little plastic missiles you could drop off. And I, I played with those a lot. But as soon as I got that Captain Power jet, never touched them. Because it had an <laughs> ejector seat. Because you press that button, the cockpit flies off, the seat flings out. Game changer. And I think that... Had they not relied on the technology as heavy, like the, the mm -hmm. game and all that, or the, the VHS tapes, if they had focused more on the toys and had a better, I guess, comic book tie-in, something yeah. else, we'd, we'd be looking at Captain Power the same way we look at G.I. Joe. Sure. Sure. I agree. Because they, they've got some... Pr like, if you want to, on your own time, go look at other figures, they have some pretty cool character designs. They're amazing. So Very underrated. A lot of back metal if you're into that. Yep. Which means they're very expensive now. <laughs> I don't know if you were to talk about mask or. Oh, that's right. I skipped I over. Because uh, I didn't recognize this stuff here. Before. Yeah, I skipped over. We'll touch on it real quick, and we'll move on. So that's a uh, condor from Mask. Um, I had that that figure as a kid. I wasn't big on Mask, but I did have one or two. But I remember definitely having this figure. And then Starcom was big for me. These are little space figures, and they have magnets in their feet. And, you know, they have metal points on all, all the vehicles and stuff. I would just stick them to the refrigerator. 
Um, but again, another hard line to get because they have these visors on their head that are hard to, you know, keep and, you know, the accessories are small. So, cool line, um, very obscure though. I think the blue guy is from Cops and Crooks, right? He is. That's what I thought. He is. I had, I didn't have any of the Cops and Crooks figures except this figure, and I didn't know what he was from. Mm -hmm. But again, just a random guy that kind of right. got thrown in my collection. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's. Uh, I was gonna. Other than, I think he's like the only thing in here that I don't recognize. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. So, uh, we have. Cops and Crooks in the front left, which is a line that I didn't know about as a kid, didn't learn about it till quasi recently, but I can tell you I would have enjoyed the shit out of it because it's similar to G.I. Joe construction, and that was what I was all about. I remember, maybe you might remember, I don't know, but uh, there was a Mortal Kombat line. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. if Hasbro did Hasbro that. did it, Okay, yep. so... Yeah, that's right. Hasbro did it, but it's not considered part of the G.I. It's Joe. not, no. Right. Yeah. They did Mortal Kombat in that scale. After they did 3 and 3 quarter, they blew them up a little bit. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Um, only a handful of them maintained the O-ring construction. Otherwise, they went to, like, T-hooks. Got it. Not T-hooks, but, like, T-hips with hinges mm -hmm. and stuff. But So, I can tell you, I would have loved that. I know it gets a lot of hate now. Yeah. But... That's something I would have enjoyed a lot of as a kid. So. Well, it's cool that because Hasbro made these, they're the same construction as G.I. Joe's, which is right. wild. They just, you know, they blew it up, blew like it you up. said. Yep. Now, this thing here in the middle, which I was going to save for last, but I'll, I'll do it since it's right there in the front. That is the, um, the Bull Alien, I believe it's called. Um, that's from the Kenner line that we touched on earlier. And that is my childhood... Uh, bull alien and uh, wanted Bobby to have it. I've held on to it all this time. I had two or three of those because um, after a certain point they ended, they all end up at big lots. Everything ends up at big lots eventually. Unless you're the palace guard from Moto Origins and that's where you go first. Um, <laughs> but so I had a few of those. It's a great toy. Um, it has a, a lever on it that you can launch the head forward and then move the head up and down once it's uh, already activated which is pretty cool, I think. So I didn't know anything really about the extra aliens because they had, like, Gorilla Alien, mm -hmm. Mantis Alien, Cobra Alien, like, Scorpion Alien, I think. But to me, they were just aliens and pretty much the ultimate bad guys because even with that Rhino Alien, if you position it correctly, you can stand upright. And when you activate the head, it looks forward, so it adds a whole bunch of extra height. So great, great line. Great line. Really underrated. As much as I don't like NECA, I do have to uh, give them some credit that they've gone deep and are making those versions in NECA, and they look great. They just break like glass, that's all. Yep. So, to the right of him, we have one Casey Jones, whom I don't know if they did a re-release of him or when he came out, because I did get him from Big Lots, I remember, but this was sometime in the 90s, and I think he was one of the first waves. Yeah. So I don't know if they did, like, a reissue or what the what the case was. Maybe they, I don't know, had a bunch of back stocks somewhere. But I remember getting him, and he was one of my favorite characters in the TMNT movie. Oh, I agree, man. So I agree. That's why, like, the one time I've appeared on camera on my channel, I wore my NECA Casey Jones mask. So, okay. And then we have Toxic Avenger next to that, correct? This is uh, uh, Colonel... Or the Toxic, to Toxic Crusader line. Toxic Crusader line, yeah. but I forget what his name is. But I it was I had him because mm -hmm. he was an obscure like KB Toys discount mm -hmm. sale, and I thought he was cool looking. So you know back then I just I got co I got toys because they were cool. Yeah, I mean that's that's how I buy toys now. Yeah. But another line that's kind of pricey. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Toxic Crusader. I keep wanting to say Avengers. That's the movie. Toxic that's the Crusader. Event. That was the cartoon. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was one of those properties. Like I was aware of. I was around for it, but I never saw the cartoon. I saw like I had a coloring book for it. I had some <laughs> of the figures, but it was like I never knew what it was. How yeah. anything married up, and I thought the guy having a tutu was weird. Yeah. But, yeah. So, 
then behind him we have a predator from the from the Kenner line. I have that same predator minus all the back metal, and mine's deeply yellowed. Yeah, a lot of them you see are are yellow, but and again, another mail away. And I can't help but think that that particular line might have been where my love of translucence started. Yeah. So between that and like characters like Iceman and the uh, Toy Biz Marvel. Yep. I, translucence is just a thing I love. I mean, so. I could blame it on the shadow for you. True. Yeah. <laughs> the shadow knows. Uh, then we got Beetlejuice next to that. Now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that head pops off and reveals an eye, correct? It does, yes. I had two of those um, from a yard sale. Sans anything, the head was gone, all the accessories were gone. Didn't know what the hell it was, but there was a subline of the Ninja Turtles that had uh, manhole covers on their back, and you'd rip a string through them and they'd mm -hmm. make noise. I thought that's what he did. Oh. And so I, can, I would try to, like, blow through the holes to make the noise, <laughs> which I never claimed to be a smart kid. Nothing. Sal, creating play patterns all over the place. That's right. So they were just, like, random zombie goons that I would play with. But weirdly enough, uh, if a character had a sword, it would end up through him. Okay. So I guess on some level the, the design of that toy was inherent, like, other than me trying to be like, it makes noise, <laughs> trying to blow wind through it. <laughs> But I guess I was able to put two and two together that the holes work. Gotcha. So, but I don't know what your uh, your memories or connections to Beetlejuice are. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I saw the movie mm -hmm. young as a kid, uh, but I remember seeing the you know cartoon. the cartoon. Mm -hmm. But this is the only figure I had from the line, which is why I had to get him. But um, that you was, know, I was one of those kids. I saw the cartoon. Years before I saw the movie. Okay. Years like uh, the Kraken up there. I didn't see Clash of the Titans until my sophomore year of college. Gotcha. I think, and so the only connection I had to the Kraken was the opening sequence to Malcolm in the Middle. I don't recall that. Yeah, it's uh, they go through this like montage or like clips from television. You just see him coming up out of the ocean, and that's it. Oh. Like, so when I saw Clash of the Titans, I was like, Oh my god! <laughs> but. Next to him is a line I care a lot about, which, underrated toy line, and I'm trying to buy them up before someone like Subpar 7 gets the license and brings them back and drives the price up even worse. But that's Aracula from Skeleton Warriors. And it's such a weird storyline, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but the character designs alone worth the price of admission. Absolutely. Like, you, you won't find cooler 90s monster toys, I think. Yeah, the diesel and were great. Again, vac metal, mm -hmm. which makes every figure great. Yeah. Which, they were, by and large, 5 POA. Uh, the human figures, or human characters, I think, may have had knee articulation. Okay. But, I remember getting, I got a Racula. I got, um, oh God, what's his name? Like the leader guy? No, well, I got uh, the scientist. He has like a metal leg and a uh, like metal head. His jaw articulates. And I want to say it's like Grimbone or Grim something, Grimstone, Grim, yeah. Grim Dark. I don't know. It's the guy's brother. So, quick, quick background it's like some human characters. There's two brothers. They're fighting over who's going to be like the next king. And one brother betrays the other brother. And when this crystal thing, I forget what happens, but there's some event that turns these bad guys into skeletons, and it affects the brother. And then gotcha. he's a, he's able to teleport through shadow. So, like, if he sees a shadow, he can, like, walk into it and then teleport somewhere else. But it's it's grim something, I can't remember the guy's name. But those are the three that I had. Gotcha. I didn't have any as a kid, but I wanted some representation, so that's why I got him. Yeah. And, uh, hold on. I'm gonna look it up real quick. I have... I know I've got it. Where's my... There it is. His name was Grimskull. Got it. Yeah, that guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I have a picture saved because people was like, I'm going to a con, you looking for anything? I'm like, yeah. yeah. this so, guy. Yeah, Grimskull. So behind that, we have Kenner Terminator, which... I like the line. 
Uh, I have... Mm, do I have that exact one? If not, I have some one very similar. They did a lot of figures, but they also did a lot of repaints in that mm -hmm. line. Like, a lot of repaints. I think, my, yeah, mine actually is that figure, but he has the gray and black camo. Gotcha. So, uh, I stuck my childhood one, and believe it or not, I didn't have the cannon arm or his, uh, I think it's a police baton that comes out of his arm. <laughs> yeah. But um, I didn't have any of the arms, but I still had the figure. And when we went to Toy Vault, like the first time or second time, they had that little spinner rack thing of like random parts. They had the arm. And oh, I was perfect. like, oh, can I get this? Or like, just take it. So nice. I was able to find a replacement arm pretty quickly. Um, there is a Terminator toy. And if you're listening and you know what I'm talking about, please let me know what it is because I cannot find it. They did like a 12 inch version or an 8 inch. It was a big version. And yes, I know about the talking one. There's one that has like holes in his chest and he can talk. This one was like was extremely detailed, almost movie accurate. He, he was 5 feet away with a molded neck that he couldn't move. And that was it. Like he, his legs may, his legs may not have even moved. It might have just been like a waist. I know his arms moved. And I've been looking to get that figure because I can't find it. I don't know where to look for it. Any search I do yields the talking one. And it's going to sound weird, but the reason I want it is because when I was a kid, I had cherry jello or whatever, and I smeared it all over him to make it look like blood. And it dried in all the crevices. I never once, I could never get it out. So if you know what I'm talking about, please comment below so I can put that dog to rest. And behind that, we got Robocop. So Robocop... Uh, was before my time, but it made a resurgence in the 90s. Um, it did. Uh, uh, Toy Island was the name of the company that, that did the, the line after this yeah. RoboCop line, yeah. which was a great line. Yeah, the uh, the neighbor kid, I ended up with uh, a RoboCop that had seen better days. Um, the one I had was all smashed and broken, but he had uh, a holster inside of his thigh. Mm -hmm. That was the only part of him that really still worked. Uh, I played with that RoboCop toy. I played with the neighbors' Robo to RoboCop toys years before I ever saw the movie. And it's one of those toy lines like Terminator, like Predator, like Alien, where it's, I don't know what it was with the 90s, but all these toy companies were like, hey, you know what kids like? Rated R movies. Right? Let's make toys. And it, it, I think it's proof positive that kids don't need a source material to like a cool toy. This is true. So this is very true. You know, that's it's it's one of those things where most of my life is again I didn't know a source material and saw it years after. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of weird to see RoboCop and be like, this is extremely violent. Right. So, but yeah. and they came with caps, which was also violent for kids. Yeah. You know, why yeah. not? Who doesn't like sulfur? <laughs> now, in this case, we have quite a variety of things. Uh, some pretty obscure stuff, some stuff that I had forgotten entirely about until I saw them here pretty much. So we've got Double Dragon and that Billy Lee was the one that I had. I got, it's, it's Jimmy, right? Jimmy Lee? Yep. Yeah, I got him later at a yard sale, Sands, everything else. Um, I had the Toy Biz uh, Wolverine with the removable mask that you could wear like a ring. Yep. That's what I did with his mask. I wore it like a ring. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Um, came with some really cool, cool weapons. You know, translucent green sword, and it's got that kind of, I don't know what you would call it, forearm blade or whatever. But they, they had action gimmicks. I think uh, Billy chopped and Jimmy kicked. Jimmy kicked. Yep. Yeah. Um, I played the game a lot. Uh, sunk a lot of quarters into that machine, the old Double Dragon, and uh, watched the movie, which I don't think I've I should have watched. I've never seen the movie. Oh my god. It defines a generation. Is it like Super Mario Brothers bad? Yeah. Okay. It's bad. It's real bad. Um, it's definitely something that a kid shouldn't have watched. Um, <laughs> but... Ew. It was a, as the kids say today, it was an odd flex. 
Like it was a weird toy line for, uh, is it Tyco? I think did that? Yes. Yeah, it was a weird, weird line for them to jump on. But they have translucent dragons in their chest. Yep. And I'm not entirely convinced that this line was based off the game. I'm pretty sure it was based off the movie. Wasn't there a cartoon? I thought there was a cartoon and that's what these guys were based off of. There might have been. I don't remember a cartoon. But again, source material may not have any connection to it. It's, yeah. If if you guys know for sure, then you, I don't know. I'm used to sounding like an idiot, so it's not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> but then we've got uh, the McDonald's. What were they called? Not micro changers. Um, the the transformers from McDonald's Happy Meals. I can't remember what they're called. My brain's shutting off. Are they food formers? Food formers. Food formers. Yeah, that sounds right. So, four of those. I think it's four. Are actually from my childhood. Yeah. And so the pancake. Yep. The two, two big Macs. Two big and Macs. Large fry. Large fry. Yep. 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 They're uh, they're interesting. Um, don't know when they came out. I'd imagine during the Transformers craze. They were. Eighty-seven. Eighty-five. Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. So before I was born, but still had them. Still played with them as a kid. Like it was, it was a weird thing. Like sometimes McDonald's toys would be a hit. Sometimes they'd be a miss. And mm -hmm. it was it was weird what would captivate you as a kid. I guess these were hits. By yeah. far, these were hits. So no no lore as far as I understand. Nope. It, but there's something about seeing. The hotcakes and the McNuggets styrofoam containers. Yeah. That yeah. just takes you back. I agree, man. Like they, they before the FDA got involved, they all they as the kids say, they hit different. Um but yeah. It's I don't know. It speaks to a simpler time, I guess. So and then we've got King Arthur behind that. I mean before we we, we move on, I wanna yeah. I want to touch on some of this stuff because we have some gold here. Oh. Uh, I remember these were before the food formers. These were little pullbacks oh. that McDonald's did. And they had Hamburglar, they had Ronald, they had the Bird, Grimace. Is that Mayor Cheeseburger? That's Mayor Cheeseburger. Um, so those were, were really awesome. Then they did, uh, this was after the food formers, they did uh, Looney Tunes superheroes where they okay. took Looney Tunes and put them in remember, DC characters' costumes. That. So this is like kind of Taz as the Flash, and me being a big Flash fan, was I had Bug, that one. Was Bugs Bunny Superman? He was. Okay. He was. Yeah, I do remember that. Yep. Um, I believe Donald was Batman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then here is, um, this was a mail away from Captain Crunch, because that That's is right. the Sog Master, yeah. I, I think his name was. He's a villain. He's a villain. Uh, Back when cereal boxes used to come up with really awesome prizes and toys, yeah, that guy, I had that guy as, as a kid. And I'm big on soggy cereal, so that's why I was all about him. Yeah. Before they made you feel bad with the sugar contents and everything else. Yep. So, King Arthur, that's Mattel, right? Yep. I'm pretty sure, yeah. So, this was a line I had King Arthur... Um, what were their names? I had two other figures. One guy was a purple guy. He had spikes that came down in front of his chest. And, I don't, and one of them was orange and black. Yep. Now, this may have been a cartoon, may have been a comic. I don't remember. What I do remember was the Richard Gere movie. Uh, uh, the Richard Gere movie called King Arthur or whatever it was. Uh, First Night. First Night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent most of my life thinking the two were related. <laughs> um, I don't know if those two things were even contemporaries, but at some point my child brain just linked them together. Um, but I think the toy line's very underrated. Mm -hmm. um, if you like like classic Motu, it's very much the same kind of construction, same build ish, same scale. Like they they got the power squat, yep. big muscles, and all that. So you could very easily take that red cape off of uh, King Arthur, give it to King Randor if you yep. want to. So it's getting up there in price now for some reason. They are. They are. But great toy line. And those swords came in clutch because that sword fit in Terminator's hand, fit in Predator's hand. And it's very much a universal kind of line. Yeah, the 90s there was like kind of this, you know, 
cohesive nature of like the five inch figure. Mm -hmm. So they all kind of work together, which was very yeah. cool. Yep. How it should have been from the beginning. Yep. Okay. So we'll plow through this last one. Yeah, there's part. um we're gonna kinda move quickly through some of this stuff just because uh a lot of it's not so impactful, but there's also not uh, you know, a ton of it, and we'll get to, you know, the last one, which is gonna be the the, the cream of the crop there. This is the real Ghostbusters shelf. Now these are not originals. These are the new modern Hasbro versions. But I remember the cartoon and I had some of the figures as a kid. I had more of the, the Fright feature figures, but I thought it was cool them doing these throwback ones. So I just, you know, have this shelf dedicated to real Ghostbusters. I see you also selected the best Ghostbuster. Of course, man. Of course. Down here something very weird. This is a Play School Mr. Hooper's Sesame Street playset. I had this when I was really, really young as a kid, and I just got it recently just because it brought back memories. But, you know, one of the coolest factors was the Oscar the Grouch that popped up. But, cool set. Again, very obscure, but, you know, just like the Fisher Price Zoo has to have a, a spot in here. This is a, a weird shelf uh, back there, the UFC figures that I actually designed when I worked at Jazzwares. But, here we have a Toy Biz Gambit from the 90s line, which was, you know, impactful for all of us, I assume. Oh, yeah. And then a Jax Bone Crunching Action Superstar Series 1 Razor Ramon. Uh, you know, that line was tail end of the 90s, so it kind of fits in here, and Razor Ramon was one of my favorite wrestlers of the 90s. Um, here is uh, some good Toy Biz uh, Captain America action right there. Um, that, you know, when, when Toy Biz lost the DC license, Marvel picked it up and kind of, or they picked up Marvel and, and ran with it, and they went really deep with these figures, and while some of them were really crappy, I feel like they course corrected really quick and gave us some mm -hmm. awesome iterations of, of figures. As much as I love the Hulk, that one was really weak. It was really weak. Weirdly enough, I had, for those that do not know, they used that Captain America buck to make U.S. Agent, mm -hmm. and I had U.S. Agent, didn't have Captain America. That's funny. So, I was like, oh, I just, I just thought it was the same guy, because they did Daredevil <laughs> in the weird colors. They did, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is Captain America, only stealth mode, I guess. <laughs> um, another pricey line down here yeah. is Dino Riders. I only had one or two of these as a kid. I cared more about the figures than I did about the dinosaurs. But uh, an Ankylosaurus is my favorite dinosaur, so that's why I got this one. Nice, that's a good choice. And then this, the better dinosaur line, was, this was done by Play School. This was called Definitely Dinosaurs. It was a very, very young kid line. Yep. But I remember I had this Triceratops. I did not have the Ankylosaurus. But I played with this thing all the time. I put my, you know, I put my figures riding that Triceratops because mm -hmm. it's nice and big and beefy. Yeah. So, had to have that one. And now we'll get to the last uh, shelf. And I think this one is like going to be really important. I think we're going to have a lot to talk about on this one. Just because even though there's only two properties in here, they are two golden properties. Mm -hmm. So, Dick Tracy, that was summer of 93? 94? I don't believe it was 94. I think, I think it was 93. I remember being early. Yeah. So, Dick Tracy was something... My, my only connection to Dick Tracy, because uh, Bobby's going to shoot me, because I haven't seen it or The Shadow. <sighs> we, need um, a, we need a movie marathon. Yeah. Um, my dad would read the Dick Tracy, like, comics to me. Um, I thought Dick Tracy might have been a girl. I was, <laughs> I think I was three. <laughs> I love Sal's four. stories. I, I'm, I was a dumb kid and nothing's changed. Um, but... So, Dick Tracy, I, I remembered, like, yellow hat, yellow trench coat. So, when I got old enough to know Curious George, I thought I, that was the same guy. Like, just... Wow. I'm not doing myself any favor. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, but everything I know about this particular line, I've learned from Bobby or Michael French. It's a... It's kind of a hated line, because they, they look so weird, and they don't really match what they looked like in the movies, but... For me, when I was a kid, it, I didn't judge it like that because I was young and didn't realize. So to me, I was like, whoa, Dick Tracy's got a gun. This is awesome. And I had all these figures. The great thing is, is the line 
99% of line is extremely easy to get. I, I believe I bought this Dick Tracy who's unpunched, perfect mint card. I bought on eBay like three years ago for a dollar plus shipping. I think shipping was six bucks. So really easy line to get. I mean, just like everything else, it's probably getting a little pricier now. Mm -hmm. The only hard one is the blank, which was a, a, Can yeah. a Canada you know, only version because of it revealed Madonna. So it's super, super hard to get. I haven't got one. They're up around $2,000 now. So I don't see me getting one anytime soon. Was that also one of those figures where it revealed a twist when the figure came out? Yeah, because it, it was the blank's face and then under it was Madonna. Uh, and the studio didn't want that being leaked, so they told uh, uh, Playmates that they had to hold the figure yeah. back. And the line didn't do well, so it only went to Canada at that yeah. point. And at that point, you know, no one really cared, so the figure was short run and very hard to get. That's better than what Kendra did with Batman with Mask of the Phantasm. I, I remember that, yeah. yeah. I remember that. No, I saw him with that movie. That movie's so, so good. good. So here at the bottom, um, what is that? I, I don't. What, what's a what's a Ninja Turtle? Well, um, I, I I can't really remember. I don't think it was really that important. No. Um, I vaguely remember it. It it, it seemed kind of cheesy, and I don't yeah. I don't think it was. No, it was cool. I don't think it was that popular. Yeah. Sarcasm, people. Just before you get crazy, sarcasm. Yeah. But. So what Bobby has there is something I didn't know existed, but I had a counterpart that you didn't know existed. Exactly. So we mentioned the Batman cereal earlier. You got these bowls with Cookie Crisp. Yep. Way and back they, in the day. Yep. They were they were sealed to the front of the the box, kind of like that, just like the Batman bank, but it's a hard ABS plastic bowl. Yep. And uh, so. I, while Bobby had a bowl, I had cups. Uh, one of them, I don't remember which turtle was which, but one was holding like a manhole cover, one was a series of pipes that acted as a handle. And all I could remember was Cookie Crisp. I didn't know if the two were connected or maybe that's just what I was eating when we got them. Mm -hmm. But I saw that in Bobby's shelf. We talked about it. I went back and I looked it up. You either got a bowl or a cup with gotcha. Cookie Crisp. And it's just kind of weird that he would have the bowl and I'd have the cup, and we wouldn't know that those two were actually mm -hmm. from the same thing. Now, the interesting thing is that they came with Cookie Crisp, but there was a Ninja Turtle cereal yeah. that was very good. And like I said, it's hard to find a box of those nowadays, or it's really expensive. So Cookie Crisp kind of beat them to the punch, and then they're like, wait, we should make our own cereal. But the bowls are... To get a set of bowls, people are like looking for like a hundred bucks. It's easier just to buy the bowls single mm -hmm. and then complete the set. Yep. And then the last thing here, Ninja Turtle related, is something I think I've talked about on podcasts. If if I ever have like millions of dollars one day, I'm gonna get something very obscure obscure. I'm gonna go to Hostess and I'm gonna tell them what will it take to bring back Ninja Turtle pies? Now this is a wrapper, an original wrapper from a Ninja Turtle pie from Hostess. For those of you who aren't lucky enough to ever have one of these, it was like a Hostess, you know, vanilla cake pie with the, you know, the the vanilla pudding in the middle, and then on the outside was green glaze, and that was a Ninja Turtle pie. These things were amazing. Did you ever have one of these as a kid? Oh, Sal. Look up pictures online. Um, to see what they look like. There are people that have videos that teach you how to make them. I don't think it's the same. Nothing's going to be the same as this Hostess pie. So, um, again, memories of going to the corner store, buying these Hostess Ninja Turtle pies. Um, it's a great way to end on this because, man, fond, fond memories, fond memories. Um, again, if you had the chance to eat a Ninja Turtle pie, you know... If you haven't been lucky enough to eat one, I'm sorry. Maybe one day we'll get them back and you'll be able to, you know, live that dream. So that just about does it for this time capsule that is in the, you know, the Valiverse HQ here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed us rambling about all this great stuff. Hopefully it was a trip down memory lane. And it brought back memories for you and, you know, you learned some cool stuff like about Cookie Crisp and 
Or you know, Sal's an idiot. Or Sal's, I don't think an idiot. I think Sal's awesome childhood stories. But thank you for, for tuning in. Uh, you know, all the stupid YouTube stuff. Like, share, subscribe, that kind of thing. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. That's all that really matters. And thanks for stopping by and uh, checking it all out.